Welcome to another episode of the Ambassador of Southern Rock. I'm your host, Michael Buffalo Smith, the uh, publisher and editor of uh, Kudzu Magazine. And uh, we have coming back with us, getting to become a regular feature on the program, a friend of mine from up in North Kakalaki. Uh, this is uh, Dwayne Fields, better known to his friends as Rebel with a Y, because that makes him just a little bit different. So anyway, uh, and I won't go any further than that, just to say it's a little bit different. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to talk about today, folks, is uh, drummers. Yeah, uh, there. Everybody has different opinions on drummers. My opinion as a musician is that uh, you got to have a good drummer and a good bass player to lay a foundation, or you don't have a band. You got to have somebody to lay that solid rock down for the guitar players to show off. And there's been a few of them in the field of Southern rock that kind of stand head, head and shoulders above the rest, you know? Uh, so we're going to talk about, and remember, as always, those are my opinion and uh, my opinion. Re rebels are his opinion and mine are my opinion. And it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's all open to interpretation. Yeah. The word subjective comes to mind. Uh, you know, is Negan a bad guy or a good guy? I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Wrong podcast. Anyway, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah. so anyway, we're, we're going to do that. We're going to talk about drummers. I would like to implore you or at least ask you to please hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, he's pointing to it and be among the first to be uh, notified. I want to plug a friend of mine's podcast too, which is kind of unheard of. Usually in this whole world of our world of ours, everybody's out for themselves, but I've never been that way. I want to tell you about a great new podcast that's on YouTube and it is called Southern Rock Insider, hosted by Chris Hicks of the Marshall Tucker Chris Band. Hicks. And he's already done six or seven episodes. Doing, he's got an interview with Paul Hornsby, uh, which in which they talk about the book that I wrote with Paul Hornsby, which is really cool. Uh, he did one with uh, Rick Burnett, the drummer, drummer from Grinder Switch. He also, he also took us on a tour of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the cemetery in Macon. Um, Rose Hill. Thank you. I just went completely blank. Boom. Just like that. And he's got one coming up where he digs deep into Toy Caldwell, who was his hero. And he's, so he's put a little work into that a lot of good stuff on there on, on Chris's channel. So check it out. If you get a chance, make sure you watch ours first and then his, <laughs> if you've got time left over after ours, watch his. So we're going to talk. You, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but I'm having jets fly over today. I'm located really close to Seymour Johnson air force base which is the home of the F-15 Strike Eagles. That is the sound of freedom, baby. If, if I could. Sound of if, freedom. If I could do Beavis and Butthead, that would have been a perfect time. <laughs> he said Seymour Johnson. <laughs> Seymour Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, uh, uh, anyway, I, anyway. The, uh, yeah, well, that's cool. And that's what's causing your hair to blow too, right? Jet yeah, smell? all that jet, uh, it smells like jet fuel. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I put a fan on so I look like a drummer today, you know, because they always got the fans blowing on them. That's, we're doing drummers, so I figured that's what I did. I tell you, I've never seen anybody use the fans to bigger effect in my life than old Sean Beamer with Molly Hatchet. Yeah. All that long hair is just blowing like out. crazy, man. <laughs> crazy. I'm like, dude, it's cool anyway, you know? And ain't that what it's all about? Being cool. I'd have to be, I'd have, man, as much as I sweat, I'd have to have two fans, one coming from each direction. 
if I had two fans, that'd be all of my fans <laughs> times two. <laughs> hey, Buff, got... why, is, why is your name on these fans? Well, I gave my fans an autograph. <laughs> uh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, I'm going to do the gentlemanly thing. I don't know why I always do this, but I'm going to start with you and let you name one of yours. And uh, as I said, um, uh, there's there's a lot of great drummers, so it's not it's easy. Of, uh, my first one is I'm going to a band that is controversial, whether they're even a Southern rock band. But after I heard Dixie Chicken, to me, they were a Southern rock band, even they're out of Hollywood, California. Yeah. And Richie Haywood, boy, he could carry a beat. Uh, just love him to death, man. Well, not to correct you, but it's Hayward. <laughs> it's not Haywood, it's Hayward. Just like Charlie Hayward gets people calling him Charlie Hayward. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. Richie Hayward. Well, uh, I was actually even looking at your correction here on my email, and I still said it wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, and uh, of course, they had a great percussionist in that band, too, Sam Clayton. Yeah. Uh, he went on and played some with Delaney and Bonnie and all that kind of stuff. Little Feet's one of the greatest bands in the history of the world. Oh, yeah. And they're still going strong. Yeah, man, going um, through all sorts of changes and arrangements and different well, I, people I, and yeah it's great yeah, they lost their their lead guitarist uh oh lord his name escapes me right now yeah last year um escapes you too huh yeah I, well i i make I no qualms I about how absent-minded i am now but oh i i guess they're still carrying on uh there there's so much little feet music that is just great i bought the box set uh last year year before last and i play that thing in my truck all the time plus on uh uh what is it uh all southern no not all southern rock it's deepjams.net yeah it's a subscription uh radio station it uh, is great all southern rock.net and every Saturday, they have a four to six hour show featuring nothing but Little Feet. And it's hosted, hosted by, by Forrest George, which is Lowell's, Lowell's son. son. yeah. And there's a lot of bootleg stuff, a lot of stuff with, uh, uh, you just interviewed her. What was her name? Uh, Sean Murphy. Sean Murphy, yes. A lot of stuff with her and a lot of stuff. Even they go back with stuff with Zappa with Lowell George, because he was in the member of the Mothers of Invention. Yeah, big time. Well, that's a good one, uh, Richie Hayward, and uh, yeah, um, I meant to say at the top of the show, so I'm gonna just interject this. I know it's completely out of place, but I just gotta say it. One of my musical heroes that just passed away, and. Uh, Oh, I've got to that. mention Jim Steinman. Uh, Jim Steinman co-wrote, uh, uh, well, he basically wrote all the songs for Meatloaf, including all that stuff on Bat Out of Hell and everything. And um, I have a, to make the story very quick, I was recording an album in 2005. And at that time, I had become friends with Steve Popovich, who has since passed on. His son's a friend of mine. Steve Pitt Popovich is the man that discovered meatloaf. So uh, I don't mean the kitchen variety either. I'm talking about Marvin Lee a day and he discovered him. And uh, Steve, I told Steve, I was recording an album. And I said, I really want to get the ear of Jim Steinman because he's one of my heroes. And he said, well, he's been wanting to hear a country, a more country version of his song. Two out of three ain't bad. So I went in the studio and we charted that thing out and made it country with Ray Brand and all of us guys play. I think George McCorkle hit a lick or two on that song too. And uh, we did it and everything like that. And um, by the time we got it recorded and got the CD out, all, uh, Jimmy had lost interest. He wasn't interested in it anymore. Uh, and, uh, you know, the same album I recorded um, 
Jack Daniels, if you please, uh, for a David Allen Co. tribute album. And then by the time my album came out, they had scrapped that project. So I'm like, okay, well, what have we learned today? Well, probably nothing knowing me. But anyway, rest in peace, Jim Steinman. Did you know that every song he wrote, and that includes uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart for Bonnie Tyler, and he wrote uh, It's All Coming Back to Me Now for Celine Dion, all that meatloaf stuff, everything he ever wrote, every song was for a proposed Peter Pan musical that he wanted to do. So huh. <laughs> it's kind of interesting that, you know, to, to know that all those songs came about from that one idea. But anyway, uh, work, yeah. stick to it. Got to remember Jimmy. He's a good one. Uh, first, uh, first person on my drum list. And, uh, you know, if Karen Carpenter were Southern rock, I'd put her on my list because she was one of my first crushes back before she, <laughs> before She's she got her, before she got her, uh, eating disorder and everything. I just loved her. And that just ran through my mind. That tells you my mind works like a cross between Robin Williams and Charles Manson. Um, and a cuckoo clock. And a cuckoo clock, well, which is not <laughs> that different at all. My first drummer, I switched a couple of mine up because I, I just realized yesterday I couldn't go any further without listing this guy. This guy's name is Matt Apps. Oh, yes. Planet of the Apps. And before that, Government Mule, of course. And yes. before that, Dickie Betts Band. When the yeah. Dickie Betts Band had Warren Haynes, Matt Apps, and Johnny Neal recorded the album Pattern Disruptive, it just rocked like crazy. It rocked. It really rocked. It's, it goes beyond Southern rock, but it still has its roots there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um or as my history teacher used to say, roots. I don't know why he said roots, but he did. It was funny. We all laughed when he would say, I want y'all for this week to read Alex Haley, chapter two of roots. And I'm like, roots? Anyway, that was pretty funny. Government mule. Um, I can't say enough about, you know, I still love the band now, but the original trio with uh, Warren Haynes, Matt Epps, and Alan Woody. Um, I saw them just, you know, dozens of times. They became the date band for my wife and I after we went and saw them together the first time at the Peace Center in Greenville. Then she wanted to go everywhere. So we went and we would go to Athens, we'd go to Atlanta, we went just everywhere to see the, uh, the mule. And the great thing about that band is uh, you never knew. They had certain songs they played every time, but they would always throw something out there, you know, eclectic covers. Um, yeah, but anyway, I've got lots of stories about Government Mule, Matt Apps. What a great guy, great drummer, a great guy, and... Uh, a great band, so that's my number five. I don't know who all was in the band at the time, but Government Mule did an album called Dark Side of the Mule. Oh, yeah. They covered a lot, mostly everything from Dark Side of the Moon and a few others from The Wall. Yeah. Uh, and some earlier stuff. And I can say, I don't know, I'm pretty sure Matt Apps was there. But oh, yeah, well, was. Matt Apps is still there. Well, I don't know whether it was a, a, the, just a trio. Or, no, it was or, after or, that. But that, I heard that on TuneIn Radio, and I went yeah. right straight to Amazon, and I bought that. I that Hearing Government <laughs> Mule do Pink Floyd, complete with the sound effects and everything, that, I love it. I, I got to see him do, I got to see him do uh, live the... Um... Well, not the whole thing, but I got to see him do uh, Shine On Crazy Diamond and Comfortably Numb in one of the shows, and it just went on forever. I mean. And they kick Comfortably Numb in the ass. That yeah. is awesome. Yep, yep, yep. I fully agree. Uh, the uh, uh, 
just as a note, the uh, they went through a phase where they were doing several things besides the dark side of the mule. They also did the stoned side of the mule, which was all Rolling Stones covers. Right. And they did the dub side of the mule, which was all reggae covers. <laughs> just several things like that. Uh, just having a good time, you know. Uh, well, Warren Haynes can play pretty much anything he feels like it. That's the truth. That's the truth. I have to remember, uh, I have to remember that this, this particular thing is actually video. I'm so used to doing the uh, podcast on Saturday with the guys and I'll just like do whatever I want to do because I know the video is not going to be seen by people. So you gotta be, you gotta remember <laughs> that not to do anything really weird and sort of like an orangutan or something, which is what I was getting ready to do. Uh, <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. What's your name? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't do both of those at the same time. And, and for sure, you won't get off topic on this one. Yeah, yeah not at all. <laughs> not at well, all. I, my next ones were, uh, I guess they would be fairly obvious. Bob Burns and Artemis Powell. The, the first two drummers for Leonard Skinner. You mean the second know. and third drummer? Yeah. It hurt me to say I that. Have, I'm sorry. I have no idea beyond that. But Bob Burns and Artemis Powell. Artemis Powell, he is like a lead guitarist, the fourth lead guitarist in Skinner to me, because he just his drums just stand out. You got three lead guitarists out there playing their hearts out, but yet you can still hear the drum beats from Artemis just just right out there in front with them. And I there's not many bands other than maybe uh, Grand Funk, you know that 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 happens. It's Artemis is just a standout above all the rest. He's a machine. And, uh, and, you know, and, and that's respectful to put Bob in there. Bob, of course, you know, was only on the first two albums. Right. But that was Freebird and Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, there you go. And, and it, it was so heartbreaking that they didn't invite him when they got inducted into the Hall of Fame, the, the alleged Hall of Fame. Uh it was pretty shitty of them not to invite him to come to it. I mean, who Bob Burns? Bob Burns, yes. Was there? He was there. Yes, he was there. Okay. Yeah. He even played with them. That's right. You're right. Who am I saying? There was somebody that was invited there. Who was it? Me, it, me, me. Well, I wasn't either. But <laughs> I know it was a few months later that Bob died, and I, I was thinking I, I made yeah. a post on that on Facebook that. Maybe I was totally wrong. I, I, he was, well, he was, he was, uh, we did a, you know, his wife died, but, uh, and after his wife died, we did a benefit here in Spartanburg to raise money for him. Cause he, you know, he wasn't loaded with money. I mean, you know, he yeah. was just doing, you know, and he, he, uh, spent the weekend and I really, really had a great time hanging out with him and all like that. But then next thing I knew, you know, he'd gotten, in a single car accident and got killed. And that was just. I Rick Rawls and Tony Beasley, they have some great videos. Oh, I know. Yeah. From where they went to visit him and tell him stories like the chapstick story and all this. They got some great video. And they also put, a, uh, they contributed to, what was it, If I Leave Here Tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of their video was put in there. Uh, well, those two guys were putting together. I mean, they got tons of footage. Yes. Like I was did. talking to Ricky the other day. Well, it's been the other day, a few months. And he said, you know, we've still got all this stuff. Uh, but, you know, we got kind of like ousted out of doing the Skinner project uh, somehow or another. It, but then they used uh, just a little bit of it. A little bit of it, but he's got just all kinds of priceless, priceless interview footage with people who are no longer with us. I hope that they, 
I hope they get it out one day. It'd be really great. Uh, I, uh, Scott uh, Green and I are very uh, lucky and blessed to see Artemis and Bob play drums together on the uh, Rock Legends Cruise Number no. Two. Uh, that just blew my mind. I had no idea it was getting ready to happen. I knew APB was going to play, but then the next thing I knew, Artemis is bringing uh, uh, Bob up out there on the deck to play. So they did Sweet Home Alabama and Freebird uh, with two drummers. And it's like, oh, hey, how much better can you get than that? That was a great, that I was remember a great going memories. To, uh, South Carolina, that benefit you had for horses in Southland. Yeah. Uh, and seeing uh, Bartimus Pile Band. And oh, yeah. They were a they, they were a lot like Skinner, where he demanded they play the same notes every night. Yeah. Y you heard that smell. It sounded like you were listening to the album. Yeah, they, that was uh, the, so. You were at there. You were there at the one. Bayless. That had George Hatcher band and APB. Yes. Yeah. And you remember what happened with the uh, the uh, Hell's Angels guys? Yes, they, threatening me and uh didn't quite, didn't quite get as bad as your, your grocery store the other day but no uh, no <laughs> no well they were threatening me and the guy showed me his gun and everything at the uh the hell's angels guy and then uh the uh the part uh, i lost my train of thought what i was gonna say was the uh artemis had asked kindly that they not smoke that night because he had asthma issues but you know they were, they were blowing yeah and so did i but they didn't care they were blowing the smoke anyway and just blowing it toward us so at the end of the night you'll remember artemis got up there and made a statement he said this is normally where we would play Freebird, but we're not yeah. going to play it tonight because we were disrespected so if you want to hear Freebird, you can come hear us in uh try on north carolina next week and we'll yeah, play it there i remember that yes whoa i was like boy you talk about balls <laughs> Say that in front of a bunch of bikers but uh yeah that was um we were a little bit all a little bit nervous that night anyway we'll we'll get off of the skinner uh thing for a minute and uh move on to my uh my next one here's a drummer from a band called I think they're on your hat. Yeah, the Outlaws. Monty yeah. Yoho. Monty Yoho of the Outlaws. And uh, kind of what I did on my list was I would put, I wrote down like one particular track that kind of just really is definitive to me. So I put down, of course, Green Grass and High Tides. Of course. 75, 1975. Uh, almost 10 minutes long and it just got into such a workout for everybody but i can't even imagine playing drums at that intensity for that long uh period of time uh, but, i guess you've gone through that album i sent you the outlaws oh god yeah a few times yeah oh god that's that's all it's it's i I guess originally it was bootleg stuff, but now it's it's put out. Yeah, and, well, and somebody put it out. Yeah. The many different versions of the uh, of Green Grass and High Tides with Monty, and even there goes another love song. He actually, I think he wrote that song. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, yep, and then uh, you know, I talked to uh, years ago when I talked to uh, Huey Thomason, uh, and he was talking about how they. The green grass and high tides was a three minute song and they yeah. just kept adding on it every night <laughs> until it became a frankenstein monster but my anyway my number four is my yoho i'm gonna try and steer back on the on topic and let you do your next one all right my next one is uh i guess he was a long time drummer with uh mr charlie daniels is uh, pat pat mcdonald yeah uh really great guy he's a great guy you you, you in a lot of his songs that you, you don't really 
notice him that much because he's just he's laying that foundation down. But boy, did he lay that foundation down for many, many, many songs. And and if he wasn't there, you'd miss him. But he's just uh, he was a great drummer. Yeah, I guess uh, I agree with that. Yeah, and uh, when we were going to the Angelus thing every year, I got to know him real well. And um, just a real down-to-earth guy, you know. All those guys that were playing at the man, oh, Chris Wormer was in there all the way up to Charlie's passing, as was Bruce Brown. All those guys that were just, and of course, Charlie Hayward, I've known for a thousand years. He's been in there since he came in in 75 with Tommy Crane. But all those guys are great. Uh, all those band members and Charlie Daniels just had a way of, um, and, and of course, Taz, but, yeah. uh, Charlie had a way of getting these great musicians and he kept them happy. So they were always there. It's really good. So yeah, well, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, my next one, number three is a, um, is, uh, Drum, a drummer by the name of Frank Beard from ZZ Top. And, Who uh, does not have a beard. Yeah, he has the, no beard. He's beardless. He's the only beard, he's the only unbearded <laughs> one, which is kind of funny. But uh, just if you don't believe that he's a great drummer, just listen to the album DeGuayo and um, the song Maniac Mechanic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, but there's just, I mean, he's just all over the place. And, and the way he comes in with Sharp Dressed Man. <laughs> yeah, just a great drummer. Um, great drummer. I'm a bigger, I guess I'm a bigger fan of the pre MTV ZZ Top, although it, those three albums they did after the MTV era, era, I don't, I never did call it selling out. I just called it uh, using common sense to, use the vehicle to make some money and the uh, songs were yeah. good i mean the songs were good but i was more about that texas boogie woogie that they did on fandango and stuff like that yeah it's the same with 38 special yeah yeah exactly they hopped on the mtv bandwagon but it's still it, it's still got southern roots to it yeah gotta love your southern roots all right go ahead okay my next Actually, one is a tie. Well, it's not really a tie. It's a team. And I hope nobody thought I was going to leave these two out. It's J-Mo and Butch Trucks. Those two guys, if you never heard Mountain Jam, the drum solo between the two of them, you are missing out. The, the way those two played together and played off of each other is just absolutely amazing. Jive Johnny Johnson and, and Butch Trucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. J-Mo, um, I mean, and then for us diehard fans that have all these bootlegs, you know, they got into the thing for years and years and years where they would have a whole section of the concert called drums everybody else would leave the stage and yeah. those two would just play off one another for like 15 minutes. Of course, then they had Mark Jonas came in and they had two drummers and a percussionist. Yes. And a lot of people <laughs> didn't like, a lot of people didn't like that part. And I to me, I loved, it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Let me tell you, I loved it. Uh, <laughs> I loved it. Oh, okay. Oh, some more of it. I got two more on my list, and uh, both of them uh, close, close, close personal friends. Number two is the um, one of the greatest drummers ever to pick up a pair of sticks, Paul Riddle from the Marshall Tucker Band. Uh, he and probably a and probably a good friend of yours too. Well, still, yeah, that's what I said a while ago, but I'll say it again. Personal friend of mine. That's what <laughs> Steve Martin used to say. They, but Paul is a really good friend and a really good guy. And, uh, you know, the drummer that I had for years and years in my band 
was a guy named David Haddix. And Dave was the one that taught Paul Riddle how to play when Paul was 15 years old. So Dave was a little bit older. We never did know exactly how old Dave was, but he, uh, he, so he was actually hatched. Yeah, exactly. But he, he passed away on us, um, you know, a year and a half, uh, or whenever sometime it was pre COVID and know that much. And uh, he was really, really, um, Paul T's hero and Paul would do interviews and in modern drummer and stuff like that. And he always, always, always would say that he, he learned from David Haddix. And Dave, of course, taught him all this rudimentary, um, all sorts of jazz style. And so the, Paul put the jazz drums into the mix with Marshall Tucker, who had Toy Caldwell playing country, Jerry Eubanks playing uh, uh, jazz and Doug Gray singing blues, and it's just a big amalgamation of all that stuff. But the drums, I think my favorite drum uh, part is uh, from this old cowboy. It's a really good beat oh, to yeah. that song. It's really good. So Paul T, uh, I say he's number two, but he's really also, he's number two and number one because number one is also number two. And if, if number one is number two and number two is number one, what is number one? How are you getting? Oh, I'm starting to sound now. like, I'm starting to sound like Colonel Bruce. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead with your next one. Well, my next one is who can leave out Molly Hatchet. Bruce Crump, who passed away a couple of three years ago. That seems to be a pattern on this program. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Uh, yeah, Bruce was great. Bruce was a great drummer. Uh, and just a, a nice guy. I mean, you, you look at this picture and he's – that sweet smiling curly haired guy and he was the same way in person he was just and and could beat the hell out of their skins uh if you want to get a um uh, an idea if if you can get the uh molly hatchet live at the agora ballroom yeah that's so good heart jam when when danny joe solos everybody and he tears up his time on the drums he's a good guy good guy that's, great drummer rest in peace bruce that's right you know you mentioned that album agora at live to agora when that came out and i was doing grits magazine they sent me one and i uh from that time on i always said that was my favorite molly hatchet album of all time I, man, I, I still love it. And I just a big fan of the, I'm a big fan of everything on there, but especially the creeper. And I think they did see for Texas on there too. Yes, they did. Yeah. And they did an awesome version. I think of awesome. Was it that one or was it uh double trouble? They did double trouble. I know they did almost, almost an exact copy of free bird live. Yeah. Yeah. I remember doing it. I remember him doing that. That was more of a tribute. Yeah, I, uh, I played it for a couple of friends, and they actually thought it was Leonard Skinner, but they weren't quite as <clears throat> learned as I was. So, learned. There you go. <laughs> learned. I'm learned. <laughs> well, that's great. All right. Well, I got my uh, my last one, and uh, I'm interested. I'm gonna be interested to see who your last one is because you got like two left <laughs> so well my, my, my last two are honorable mentions oh okay well you still I've got one my, well i've done like seven but they were some of them were teamed up together yeah. bob and, oh, bob yeah. and, and 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 artemis and well nobody Dan said it was a prerequisite that you had to know how to do math yeah if i wanted to i could do sit here and do 25 until you cut me off yeah yeah <laughs> Do you know 25 drummers? Okay, I could probably do 12 <laughs> <laughs> until you cut me off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, my uh, 
my number one uh, has to be the late great Jackson Spires from Blackfoot. Uh, just a powerhouse. I was so lucky to call him my friend. So lucky to play on stage with him. And there, I've told the story a few times, but I'll never forget being on this tiny stage in Virginia Beach. And uh, they they used to mess with me. Jay Johnson would say, "We're going to do Can't You See? Get up here and get ready. You can play Can't You See?" I'm like, "Okay." So get up there, and I'm right in front of Jack's drums, and they kick into Train Train. And <laughs> all through the whole song, I'm I'm like scared to death that he's going to shatter a drumstick and a shard of wood is going to run into my jugular vein and kill me dead. Cause I mean, he was beating the fool out of those things. And I look back and he's just laughing his butt off, but we had so much fun together and, um, uh, just, you know, train, train, one of the greatest, uh, every, just everything. Uh, uh, gimme, gimme, gimme. Uh, and of course, highway song goes on and on and on. And, you know, Jackson, of course, wrote most of those songs too. I, I think, uh, I think train train was actually written by, um, what's his name? Um, who's the grandfather? Shorty. Yeah. Shorty Medlock. Yeah. He didn't write uh, it that style, but he wrote it. <laughs> I never, I never got to see him in concert. I, I not see Jackson in concert. I seen Blackfoot, but it was later. Uh, uh, but I've read a story where they were playing somewhere, and for some reason, when they got ready to play or get ready to set up, Jack's drum kit hadn't arrived yet, so he had to borrow the opening act's drum kit. Oh yeah, I don't know. And he <laughs> w used it. He played it. He beat the ever-loving hell out of it. And after the show, he went to the the, the, the starting acts, the opening acts drummer, and told him, "said Look, I'm sorry. You know, I beat your drum kit all to hell." He said, "I'll pay for all damages, or I'll buy you a new drum kit, or whatever you want." And the dude's like. Are you kidding me? <laughs> these are battle scars. I'm going to tell everybody these were made by Jackson Spires. Yeah, that's so, right. <laughs> that's right. That's right, man. Yeah, I would have been the same way. Um, that's uh, that's one of the guys. So, um, it was always giving me gifts. And uh, I used to think that I was, you know, special to... I was the only one and he was doing all that. And then when I went to his memorial service in Orlando, I was hearing story after story after story of all kinds of people that he was always giving them little gifts and he knew everybody's spouse's name. Every time he talked to them and asked about their husband or their wife, he even knew the pets names. I thought, I thought that mine was the only ones that he knew. How's Taz and Tessa? How are the kids? How are Ben and Hannah? He just he just remembered all that stuff. And I, I just thought that, that was the coolest spear point that he made for you that you want. Oh yeah, that uh well yeah, he actually purchased that as um it's from a shaman in Arizona. It was a thousand years old and it was for protection. And then when I lost my eyesight down in Huntsville at that gig, the Grits Fest too somebody relieved me of all my jewelry in my motel room because there was all kinds there was like 30 people in there and they waited until i was blind and stole my jewelry it just makes me mad that anybody would steal stuff especially from somebody who's blind yeah i <laughs> see you no know, it's just not right but oh well what you gonna do uh honorable mentions on your part Honorable mention is a a, a a a good friend of mine. Well, I don't see him often, but when I do see him, he he comes up and he shakes my hand. He tells me hello, how are you? How's life? How's Jessica? Uh, he's he started out as uh, well. His his big break was he was a drummer from the band Cry of Love out of Raleigh, North Carolina, 
and now he's the drummer for Nantucket out of North Carolina, and he's also the drummer for Tuesday's Gone, which is my good friend Ryan King's uh, Leonard Skinner tribute band. I'm talking about Mr. Jason Patterson. He can skin a set of skins. <laughs> <laughs> I love him to death. He he's he's if you saw him, he, he looks kind of like a college professor with long hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he's just the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. Me and my daughter uh, were at the state fair one year, and I kept hearing somebody say, Rebel, Rebel. And I kept looking around. In a few minutes, I saw Jason. He kept running up to me. or well, not running, but he came up to me. Rebel, how you doing? And it, yeah, and, and it was just – I'd only met him like three times, like you said, with Jax. He's just – he just remembers everybody and he's friends with everybody he meets because he's such a nice guy. Yeah, true. I, um, I was fortunate enough to originally meet him. Uh, my drummer for years was up in, up in Greenville, Freddie Wooten and Freddie had Palmetto music, which later became Palmetto drums. Uh, he built, and I guess he still does builds drum kits and, um, Paul Riddle's one of his endorsers and, uh, you know, all these different uh, folks and, and Jason was, uh, as well. And, um, he was down at Palmetto several times. I got to meet him and then, uh, then I got to see him at the, um, Warren Haynes, uh, one of the many Christmas jams that we used to yeah. go for a while. We were going every year, uh, I guess about five years and then, haven't been in forever, but back in those days and all cry of love played there quite a bit. And, uh, it was a lot of fun, but yeah, he's, he's great. Great guy. Great drummer. Great drummer. Uh, you want to go ahead and do your other honorable mention? I do my other honorable mention is a pretty good friend of mine. Uh, I haven't seen him in years, uh, but he, he was with the band Swamp Dwamp. I know you've heard us talk about Swamp Dwamp. That's Swamp a crazy Dwamp. name for a band. That's a great. They'll never make it anywhere. They got a <laughs> crazy name, Swamp Dwamp. No. Well, you ever heard of the Black Eyed Peas? You know, hey, <laughs> names is is the content of the music. Uh, I'm talking about uh, David Lee. David Lee. I first met him. Uh, the first time we saw Swamp the Womp, what a great guy. And another guy that just remembers who you are, remembers the family. And he's uh, recently had a liver transplant. And he's also recently had part of the upper lobe of his, one of his lungs removed. So he's, He's, I ain't going to say he's in pretty bad shape because he's recovering very well from both of them. And I'm sure he's got a lot more years of percussion going on. Uh, David Lee, I want to say howdy. Take care of yourself. Love you, brother. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. You. you know, the thing, uh, the thing about David, too, uh, I'd like to say uh, to people listening that might not know, uh, you know, we both knew the lead singer Gig Michaels who passed away. Great. Guy. All the years that Swamp to Womp was together, uh, I think David was the only band member that never, he never changed. He was always Gig and David and whoever else was playing in the band. But it was I always think, I think David. Maybe right there at the very last album, I think David left. I'm not oh, really? Sure. Might have been, might have been. I don't know. Uh, I, uh, you know, last time I saw him, we were at a beach house uh, up in North Carolina with Roxanne Lark and a bunch of us, and uh, and he was there. And um, that was the last time I got to see him. That was a long time ago. Golly, time flies when you're, you know, living. Uh, I have two honorable mentions, you know, while we're throwing name dropping friends, I've just got to go ahead and say 
Robert Nix from Atlanta Rhythm Section was a friend of mine. And yet another one has gone on to Southern Rock Heaven. Uh, I've got a uh, platinum album hanging in my house that he gave me on the occasion of Grits Magazine's fifth anniversary. He had a platinum champagne jam album made up and the plaque is uh, uh, to me and all I just means the world to me. I, so it waited till my CD release party in Alabama at the Space and Rocket Center. And he had this thing wrapped up in a blanket. He got up on stage and he handed me that. I, I thought I, I thought I was gonna pass out. But uh, <laughs> but he's a great drummer, songwriter, goes all the way back to the candy men and uh, the classics four spooky all that and then the candy man backing up roy orbison and uh of course and he wrote uh he wrote a bunch of the songs including so into you and i remember one of the last times i talked to him while he was still with us uh he said that that song so into you really uh gave him mailbox money forever because there was a movie Bill Murray did called Lost in Translation. And that song figured into the movie big time. And he told me, he said, if you don't do anything else, Michael, try and get a song into a major yeah. motion picture. You, you can live off of that money for the rest of your life. <laughs> so anyway, Robert Nix, um, my favorite track they played on was... Uh, was the title track from the album Up Against the Wall, Back Up Against the Wall, 73. Uh, my other one is... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you talk about six degrees of separation. Oh, yeah? uh, I was listening to a live album of uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard some time back. <laughs> and of course, on the live album, there was a cover of Up Against the Wall. Redneck Mother. Redneck Mother. And uh, about midway through the song, he started telling a story about how the song was written and how it should never have been written. It should never have been recorded. It should never have been re-recorded. <laughs> and he kept on, he said, and I ate the song, he said, except for every july when i go out to the mailbox <laughs> yeah my first you, you, know, you want to hear it you want to hear it again <laughs> exactly golly yeah i have one more honorable mention just i just uh he kind of came in on me at the uh i should have thought of him a lot earlier but um just a wonderful guy i finally got to meet a couple of years ago i had not met him before uh, and it's, his name is Derek Hess from Rosden Collins. Oh, band. Yes. And, uh, he is just a, a killer drummer, uh, man on prime time and don't misunderstand me. And all I got to say is if you don't think cowbell is important, listen to donut, <laughs> don't misunderstand me because it needs more cowbell. No, it's got just the right amount of cowbell. And, uh, Derek was an incredible drummer and, during the time that I was talking to a lot of those guys like um, Randall Hall and him and Barely Harwood and uh, Tim Lindsay, all those guys were one big group down in Florida. Uh, I don't mean band. They were just a kind of a right. group of friends, included Billy Powell. Uh, a lot of those guys that they would go fishing together, all kinds of stuff. It was pretty cool. But uh, like I said, I got to meet Derek whenever we did that uh, full moon uh, festival down in Jacksonville. I have a signed drumstick, I think, from Derek Hess. I may have got it from you. I don't know who. Probably I got. did. Yeah, I got several from him <laughs> and passed them on. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I got a whole collection of signed drumsticks. You got a whole collection of everything, brother. Yeah, but yeah, I just need a place to display it. When I go to your house, I'm just in all, just all the stuff you've got. Not even Southern Rock, but your, your, your Marvel Junk. comics, your DC comics, your movies. <laughs> for for a small house you live in, you have a you actually have a small museum, brother. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a, oh my gosh, my alarm's going off. Stop that. Uh, okay, well, yeah, and I, I, I still have the dream of having a museum. Uh, and I, it's so weird. I'm still putting things together to have displays and uh, hoping that one day somebody with some money will go, hey, let's do this. Let's, let's put all this stuff on display so everybody can look at it. I hope it, I hope it comes for it to fruition because I'd be the first one there at the door waiting to get in. Well, yeah. Well, you don't have to wait. Once it's open, you're, you're one of the special ones. So you can just come around the back and we'll let you in as long as you hand us off a little bottle of that special beverage that you, uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm doing my Doug right there. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about too. Is that, uh, yeah. that special, yeah. man. Not anymore, that damn <laughs> That's, that special, bo- that special <laughs> jar that you carry around with you. Um, that's it. That's our drummers. And uh, that's a whole list of drummers that can't be beat. Ah, I see what you did there. Uh, well, I shouldn't have. <laughs> it, should, it should be against the law to stoop <laughs> that low, but I did. Okay, well, that's it. And uh, let you go and take care of things. And uh, thanks for thanks for doing this with me. Thanks for sharing your expertise. If that's what you want to call it. <laughs> to mention your rugged good looks and the wind blown hey, hair. Look, I'm a drummer. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear, <laughs> I want to hear you drum <laughs> and sing. Well, I don't know. I, 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 I drone a lot. I don't know if I drum <laughs> a drone, a drone. Well, okay. Well, anyway, anyway. all Later, right. Well, folks. All right, say bye. Bye. Ta-ta. Making it back to make it. Give me some grits, gravy, and bacon. Just a little something to tide me over. The Mama Louise and the Agent H open. She got fried chicken and pinto beans. Everything that a body needs That's why I'm making it back to make Give me some grits, gravy and bacon Just a little something to hold me over Till Mama Louise and the H&H open